Greetings dear friend. Once again Mist covers an uninhibited town ready to welcome new guests. So make yourself comfortable and get ready to listen to another story. A story about loss, suffering and love. Once again, welcome to Silent Hill. The first part of Silent Hill achieved a certain financial success on the market. That's why after several months, Team Silent started working on the sequel. Here I could tell you several things about the developing process, but it would be extremely difficult to do without explaining some plot events to you first. So we'll save all interesting twists and turns for the second half of this video. Now we'll come closer directly to the game. This game was released after two and a half years after the first part, and was quite different from that in terms of the story. There was no cult anymore, there were no demons, there was absolutely no connections to the first part, besides the town of Silent Hill itself. Although everything is not quite the same either, but as I've already said, we'll talk about it after the plot. But before that, there is a short technical announcement. Originally all Silent Hills were released with 4 to 3 aspect ratio, but in the era of widescreen monitors, there was the HD version released, but the quality is something to be desired, which will be said in future. I won't be using that HD version gameplay, but in order to fill the empty sights, I'll use some magic, meet the widescreen mode and I hope it will work perfectly to the very end. Now the story. The events of the second part take off after 10 years of the events of the first part in 1993. The main character James Sunderland is standing in a dirty toilet room, looking at his own reflection in the mirror and says only one phrase, Mary, could you really be in this town? After that he walks out of the room to the viewing platform. He'll be feasting his eyes on the Toluca Lake and will tell a player what actually led him to this town. He's recently received a letter from his wife Mary where she writes that they have always wanted to come back to Silent Hill once more, but they still haven't. And now she's somewhere there alone, in their special place, waiting for him. All fine and dandy but Mary died three years ago from an illness. So how could she write a letter? Is she still alive? Is she really waiting for him? In order to get the answer, James has come to Silent Hill. After realizing that the main road is blocked, our protagonist leaves his car and goes the alternative way on foot. And the first place he sees is the cemetery where he meets a slightly messed up young woman, Angela Orozco. James tries to find out whether he's going the right path to Silent Hill. Angela says yes, but strongly recommends not to go there. There is something wrong with this town, she says. There might be dangerous. But James explains that he doesn't care whether it's dangerous or not, if there is the slightest chance that he'll be able to find his wife, he'll go there. After reaching the outskirts, James sees that the town is uninhibited and has been abandoned for some time already. Only one strange, barely seen shadow is going somewhere. After following it, James will meet his first rival, and from that moment, monsters will start to appear on the streets. Is it dead? What the hell is it? It's not human. Since James has no clues where to look for his wife, he decides to go to Rosewater Park, the place where they could spend a whole day together. But there is a problem. All roads leading to the park are either destroyed or blocked. The solution is found really quickly. There is a chance to go through an apartment building and go up to the park. I won't be describing all that wandering in the building, I'll just tell you about the main events that happened within this period of time. James will meet a white-haired girl on his way, who despite her innocent appearance, will behave with aggression and get in the way of obtaining the key. Directly after that, there will be a completely different situation. In one of the corridors, behind a metal grating, there will be the great and horrible pyramid head standing, the main symbol of the second Silent Hill and one of the most recognizable monsters in the game industry. Of course, we'll talk about the character and his appearances in the game later, but for now, he's just standing there and looking at the main character without any attempts to attack. In one of the apartments, James will find one more character, Eddie Dombrowski. But just like with the case of Angela, we'll look at the plotline considering minor characters in details a bit later. Finally, after leaving the building, James once again meets that aggressive little girl. 
In the conversation, she mentions name Mary, but without answering where she could hear that name, the girl runs away. All that remains for James is to go to the park and meet his wife there, Mary. No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? Although he quickly understands that she's not her, just a very similar looking woman who is called Maria, only her outfit is more frisky and she actually behaves the same way. This way or another, the search has stumbled upon a dead end. James tries to remember if they had another special place with his wife. He comes to the conclusion that it might be the Lakeview Hotel where he's about to go. But now in company with Maria because she's scared to be there on her own, in the city full of monsters. The first stop on their way is Bowling Building, where player will once again meet Eddie and that little girl who runs away after seeing James. Eddie tells us that the name of the girl is Laura, and we try to catch up with her because it's too dangerous to be alone in such a place, especially for a little girl. This chase brings our heroes to Brookhaven Hospital. After some time, Maria will feel sick, and she'll decide to stay in one of the patient's rooms. James will be trying to find Laura, and eventually he'll find her in one of the rooms. She'll tell us that she knows Mary, because they met each other one year ago in the hospital. Certainly James won't believe that, because Mary had died even earlier, but there is something more interesting. There is a letter that was written by Mary. Of course, James will try to find it and fall into a trap. Laura will lock him up in the room along with monsters, taking it out on James because he called her a liar. Laura? Okay, I guess it won't open it. Having defeated the enemies, there is a siren heard, announcing that Silent Hill is about to transform into its dark version. Our protagonist will try to find Maria, but he won't be able to find her in the patient's room where she stayed. However, she will be found eventually and will go off into hysterics that James is so and so, that he left her alone, that she was scared, and that he's more concerned about his dead wife and not her. Still alive. Just... Stay with me! Don't ever leave me alone! You're supposed to take care of me! <laughs> I say still alive because as long as they go down to the basement, the pyramid head will start chasing them. In the end, James manages to jump into the elevator, while doors close right in front of Maria's face, leaving her to be torn to pieces by the monster. No! No! James comes to life after Maria's loss and decides to continue his journey to the Lakeview Hotel. Unfortunately, the direct road is impassable, so we have to find another way to get there. The only option is to cross the lake on a boat, but in order to get to the marine terminal, James has to go through the building of historical community of Silent Hill. I didn't tell you about this building last time. This is a small building where a rather small museum is situated, but the main point of this building is its location. The museum was built right above Toluca prison, and James will find out about it soon enough, since there is no direct path to marine docks. This is a long staircase leading under the ground right inside the prison. The world loses any logic here. James will have to jump a lot and fall. The ceiling and the floor may be discovered in completely different locations. After a long wandering inside the prison, James will find himself in the labyrinth, the tangle of corridors and underground catacombs. This is a very strange place that definitely couldn't exist in a real prison. However, an amazing surprise is waiting for James in one of the prison cells. Maria, alive and unharmed. But her behavior is really strange. She doesn't remember the events of the hospital and besides, she mentions things that only Mary could have known. The videotape to be specific that they recorded with James when they were visiting Silent Hill. You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. Being really confused, our protagonist tries to find a way to the other side of the room. But when he succeeds, he sees a very disturbing picture. Maria died, bitten to death. James has to deal with her death for the second time already. However, this time there is nothing he can do and decides to leave the prison. After reaching the marine terminal, James sits into the boat and goes to the Lakeview Hotel where he hopes to find the answer to the questions he's been looking for. Is Mary still alive and waiting for him there? But first we'll meet Laura again. This time the girl is not so negative. 
and even gives James the letter she was talking about. According to the letter, it's obvious that Laura and Mary knew each other really well. In the end of the letter, Mary congratulates Laura on her upcoming 8th birthday. James decides to specify how old Laura is. She turned 8 only last week. How old are you? Um... I turned 8 last week. So... Mary couldn't have died three years ago. So there is still hope to meet Mary again. In the hope of this, our protagonist goes to the room, where he stayed with his wife several years ago, but doesn't meet anyone there. Only a TV set with a video cassette recorder. James plays the tape from their vacation in Silent Hill, and here the whole truth has been revealed. Mary didn't die from an illness. James killed her. Smothered her to death with his own bare hands. Then he got this out of his head, built an illusion in his mind, that his wife died from an illness, and he is innocent. She... she died because she was sick? No. I killed her. However, this story isn't over yet. Mary's voice from the radio starts calling James. He goes to the roof but meets two pyramid heads along the way, and Maria shackled to the cell. Once again, James has to see how Maria dies by the hands of the monsters, and he has to fight them both this time. After defeating monsters, James is going to deal some business with Mary, who is waiting for him on the very top of the hotel. Their player will be able to find one out of six endings. But I'll take a sudden twist and tell you about it later. So the unfamiliar with this game people will ask me, what's the big deal about this game? Some guy has been looking for his wife and then he realizes that he killed her? Doesn't sound like the plot of the year. But familiar with this game, people will ask me, where the hell is another half of this plot? Don't worry, the explanation is about to come. I decided to divide my story into several parts and make this one a little bit different from the previous one. Actually, the same was done by the developers from Team Silent. Silent Hill has changed its conception. It's not the city which is devoured by darkness this time, but the city that attracts people who made some awful things in their lives, and it turns their most horrible nightmares into reality. The main character in this story isn't James, but the town itself. And he's not the only one. I just slightly mentioned some minor characters before. And now I'll tell you about them. Since they, like James, have their own stories to hide. And that's why, let's analyze these characters more specifically. Enlighten the facts that are not spoken openly, but can be figured out this way or another. So, Eddie Dombrowski, a 23 years old young man suffering from obesity, and hating himself for that. Girls didn't like him and he was mocked all the time. Finally he broke down and shot a dog because of his anger and after that popped a gap into its owner's leg. After that he had to hide out from the police and at that moment started feeling guilty which led him to Silent Hill. On his way he met Laura and they decided to go together. You can say that judging by different fragments from the first intro video where a player can find this couple near the white wagon. Also you can see this wagon on the viewing platform in the place where the game starts. His first meeting with James happens in one of the apartments, where, in the kitchen, there is a dead body lying in the fridge, and Eddie, I beg your pardon, is puking in the toilet. Our protagonist tries to find out who that dead man is, but here Eddie starts giving excuses that he was not the one who killed him. As we remember, he already shot a living man once. What could prevent him from doing that again? Perhaps that's the reason why he feels sick, although there is no proof to it. Also, he says that he didn't see any pyramid head, but saw other strange monsters. That only confirms that every person sees his own version of Silent Hill, depending on the ill acts that this or that person performed. Let's pass the scene in the bowling club and move on to the scene in the cafeteria, where Eddie will be sitting on the floor with a gun, and there will be another corpse found in front of him with a bullet in his head. This time Eddie will profess that he shot him because he looked cross-eyed. Killing a person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head. Pow, he says. James sees that Eddie is slowly losing his sanity. And Eddie says that everybody's been bullying him, so why can't he have his revenge? But after seeing that James doesn't understand his point of view, tries to quickly change his story and says that the body had been there before he came. The next and the last time a player meets Eddie in the industrial cold storage plant. There are several dead people around him and Eddie has lost his mind completely. He says all those marks and jokes he endured. From all that, he concludes that maybe he's pathetic. But it doesn't matter if you're alive and your offender is dead. A typical example where a person who's been humiliated gets some power in his hands. After that, he takes revenge on everyone, even those who are completely innocent. 
James just falls into the heat of the moment and has nothing to do but to kill Eddie. And one more moment to this story. Why do you think the battle is happening in the giant fridge? That's because, as I've already said, all people see Silent Hill differently, and at that time, James invaded Eddie's inner supernatural world. The fridge symbolizes Eddie's separation from real world, hiding in a silent and cold place where no one's around. Also, it represents his cold calculations and absence of remorse after his sins. In the beginning of the game, he felt guilty, and after some time, his character becomes more and more cold-blooded. The next character is Angela Orozco. Since she was a child, she was a subject of physical and sexual harassment, performed by her heavily drinking father and brother. She suffered a lot, hated her own life and tried to commit suicide several times, but never managed to actually finish it. And her mother diligently tried to ignore everything that was concerned with her daughter. One day her mother suddenly decided to leave her family for some unknown reason, leaving her daughter one on one with her abusers. One day Angela just broke down took a kitchen knife and killed her father and brother. And just like Eddie after those events, Silent Hill started to call her. That's the reason she was there for the first time. James meets her at the cemetery right in the beginning of the game. Angela confesses that she has come to this town to find her mother, and that she hasn't seen her father and brother for a very long time as well. Perhaps she, just like James, just erased those memories of killing in her head. It's obvious that the constant violence seriously influenced her mental condition. She is fearful, touchy and her mood changes really fast. During the cemetery scene it's barely seen though, but when James finds her in one of the apartments, all symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder are evident. Angela lies on the floor in front of a huge mirror holding a kitchen knife, the weapon she killed her brother and father with. Oh, it's you. Exhaustion, insomnia are seen in her face. Clearly she's trying to commit suicide again, and James tries to persuade her from doing that, asks her to give him the knife, and her psychological problems appear once more. At first she agrees, but at the moment when James tries to take the knife, she becomes violent, screams and points that knife at him. Literally after several seconds, she changes again apologizes and runs away. Her fear of men is clear here. Perhaps she thought that James would also abuse her, beat and rape. We'll meet her for the third time in one of the labyrinth rooms, with one of the monsters there, Abstract Daddy. It looks like a human silhouette lying on the bed, covered with human leather. The figure on top is Angela's father, and the one under him is Angela herself. This enemy symbolizes that sexual violence she's been subject of for her whole life. Another proof is that the figure below is writhing in agony, and her mouth has a resemblance with vulgar lips. After achieving victory, Angela will harshly stand up and start beating monster to death. Just like in real life, she's been enduring humiliation for a very long time, but one day she just couldn't take it anymore, and killed her father. Despite the fact that James helped her, she becomes furious, shouts at him, tells him not to touch her and blames her for cheating his wife for someone else, probably meaning Maria. It's worth to mention that all monsters in the game are the projection of James's inner world. But Abstract Daddy doesn't refer to protagonist by all means. Just like Eddie, Angela sees her reality in a different way, and that monster was a projection of her fears. So how could James see the daddy? Perhaps because he invaded Angela's supernatural world. We can say that judging by the walls, because they are covered with human skin, and it also leads us to sexual violence. A player once more will enter Angela's supernatural world on the hotel staircase. There will still be human skin all over the place, but there will be some fire added. It's hot as hell in here, James says. For me, it's always like this, she replies. Her whole life has been a real hell since the day she was born, and still is. She thanks James for saving her. He should have let her die so that nightmare would have ended. She goes upstairs the burning staircase and disappears in the fire. It is unknown whether she died or not. Unlike Eddie, her story is not told completely. So three people who committed horrible things came to Silent Hill according to its will. They all have to accept punishment for their sins. That's why, at the cemetery of Toluca prison, a player can see the headstones where the names of Angela, Eddie and James are engraved. But, as you can see, there are more than three headstones. So what's engraved on the fourth one? I'll tell you about it some next time. If those three people came to Silent Hill because of their sense of guilt, then with Laura, everything's completely different. We already know that she has been friends with Mary. They both spent their time in the hospital and talked a lot. 
and Mary was telling Laura stories about how wonderful it was when Mary and James were visiting Silent Hill. She even wanted to adopt the girl because Laura's parents died. The case of their death is unknown though. When Mary died, nobody told Laura about it, so this little girl decided to find her. But since she's just a little girl and hasn't done any horrible things yet, Silent Hill represents to her as a wonderful and beautiful place. She wanders the streets freely without any fear of monsters, because in her reality, they don't even exist. There is also an explanation why Laura treats James so badly. The thing is that the worse Mary's illness was getting, the more often she would vent her pain at others, and James had to deal with it the most. She yelled at him, fought with him and cried. James was getting tired of those hysterics and visited his wife more rare and rare, and Laura knew that. That's why she didn't have a warm spot for James, because she thinks that he betrayed Mary. Everything is much more difficult with Maria. At least because there is a whole additional scenario where we can find out what she had been doing before she met James. You won't be able to find it in the original version of the game, but I'll tell you about it in the end of the video, don't worry. Her story starts in a strip club called Heaven's Night, where she worked as a dancer. We can claim so because she had keys from this place and judging by the promo posters with her image right in the beginning of the game. It's quite interesting how James didn't see the resemblance with his wife even then. Her origin remains unknown, except perhaps she's the only character who didn't arrive to Silent Hill but lived there. But even she doesn't know anything about her past. She's just sitting in the dressing room and thinking about what to do next. All people are missing and there are monsters all over the town. She can either commit suicide right now or try to fight for her life. She decides to fight and goes outside trying to find any living people. After entering into one of the houses, she finally meets another person. But he doesn't want to bear company and talks to Maria through the door. In the dialogue, we find out that this is the owner of the house, Ernest Baldwin. At the roof, she finds a postcard where Emmy Baldwin congratulates her dad on his birthday. At that time, a girl's voice starts talking from nowhere and asks to give this postcard to her daddy. Give it to my daddy. Maria thinks that this is Ernest's daughter and asks him about her. And she turns out to be right, but the girl died a long time ago. She fell from the roof, probably when she wanted to take that postcard. And it's been 10 years already since Ernest can't forget about her. However, he thinks there might be a chance for a union. Ernest asks Maria to bring a white liquid from neighbor's house that will probably be able to revive his dead daughter. He can do it himself for some unknown reason. Without a strong belief, Maria decides to fulfill his will. And then Ernest will tell Maria about her fate. That she will meet a bad person called James, who will be looking for her, but not quite her. Meaning that James has come to Silent Hill looking for his wife, who looks almost the same. And then, suddenly Maria starts remembering some things about James, although she never met him. Not being eager to hear further explanations, she opens the door, but there is no one there. Perhaps after his daughter's death, he committed suicide and remained in his own house, but as a ghost. That's why even a player couldn't see him, but that's just a theory. After going outside, Maria decides to shoot herself, but in the very end takes away the gun and starts going towards her fate, towards James. James. However, this prehistory doesn't give us the explanation who Maria actually is and why she looks almost the same as Mary. The name of this scenario a little bit lifts the veil of mystery, born from a wish. Perhaps Marie is just a ghost, an illusion that was born in the imagination of James, who desperately wanted to meet his wife again. Maybe she doesn't actually exist. There are several facts that support this theory. In the very beginning, Maria doesn't remember who she is. You can find her in company with other characters. It means that no one else can confirm her existence. Voice, appearance and resemblance in names also can support this theory. And the main thing is that she has all memories of Mary. She knows about the videotape, knows about the special place. Always leads James the right way, tries to protect Laura, because they were friends with Mary. But the most important thing, she knows the name James, even though he never said it to her. And though she heard of him from Ernest, she couldn't have known his appearance. And at last, she had said about Mary's death even before James told her about it. Also, while playing as Maria, players fight the same monsters as James. 
In other words, creatures which were born by the mind of James. Perhaps the town created Maria to constantly punish James for murder. That's why we can see her death several times, in order to make James feel the loss of a beloved person. But Maria's character was quite unstable sometimes. She flirted with James, sometimes could raise her voice to a shout. She had her own positive and negative aspects of personality. She had reasons to be loved and to be hated. It was done on purpose. She was not supposed to be perfect, she had to be like a real person. A character who could be loved not only by James, but a player as well. Well, it's time to tell you about the endings and the actions that may lead to this or that one. But this time the conditions were really blurred. There was no complete choice structure like in the first one. The finale could form out of insignificant elements a player could not even pay attention to. Let's talk about them. The first one is called Leave. When James goes up to the room, he sees Maria dressed into his wife's dress. He understands that she wants to take Mary's place. He rejects her. And from this point, fight with final boss starts. After that, James finds himself next to his alive wife lying on the bed. He asks to apologize him for what he did. He couldn't look at her suffering, so he decided to stop it, and he really is sorry. He wants this pain that tears his heart apart to go away. The truth is, I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. Mary forgives him and dies afterwards. James with Laura leaves Silent Hill and starts his life again, but now without this heavy burden. In order to get this ending, a player should have at all costs prevented the death of James, heal him all the time and avoid injuries. This is the case where your gameplay actually influences the plot. This way, a player shows how he cares about himself and he doesn't want to die. He has a lot of things to live for. In turn, James must not pay any attention to Maria, not to visit her in the hospital, let monsters beat her, and not to wait for her while she's running up to James, letting her know that he doesn't care about her. He's interested only in Mary and he's loyal to his wife and he doesn't want any substitutions. All in all, a player must pay attention to things that reminded of Mary, read the letter several times, look at the picture in the inventory. Also before the final fight there is a rather long corridor, and while walking in this corridor a player can listen to the dialogue between James and his wife, where she was at the hospital. She blames James, shouts at him and says horrible things, and a player should listen to it till the very end. This way James shows that even though the pain, he wants to be with her and doesn't leave her. James, wait, please don't go, stay with don't leave me alone. I didn't mean what I said. Please, James. Tell me I'll be okay. Tell me I'm not going to die. Help me. However, there is a completely opposite ending, where in the final scene, Mary will be waiting for his husband. James tries to apologize for everything, says that he's been looking for her for so long, but she doesn't accept his excuses since he traded her for Maria. After the fight, our protagonist will go to Rose Water Park, where alive Maria will be waiting for him. James offers to leave the town and start living together. When a couple comes to the car, Maria starts coughing, and James says that she has to do something about that cough, a phrase that sounds both caring and threatening, because we all remember how Mary's illness ended up. something about that cough. In order to get this finale, a player should take care of Maria, visit her at the hospital, defend her from monsters and try not to think about his own wife. Don't even think about any picture, letter and don't listen to the final dialogue. Just go through the door right away. This way James demonstrates that he's sick and tired of all hysterics and wants to leave her. And here's the saddest ending. After the fight, James is sitting next to his dying wife. He says that life without her is the true hell, full of pain and suffering. He doesn't want to leave anymore, and wants to leave, in order to be with Mary in another world. She tries to persuade him not to do this, but James can't bear this pain anymore. After that, he takes her body, puts it into a car, and drives down into the lake. All these events are not shown straightforwardly, but nevertheless this finale is implied. Now I understand the real reason I came to this town. I wonder 
What was I afraid of? Without you, Mary, I've got nothing. Now we can be together. There is a version that Mary's corpse was in James's truck all the time, and designer Masahiro Ito even said that the body could be found on the back seat. But James just refused to notice it, just like the fact of his sin. This way everything becomes really clear with her incompatible date of death. James killed her and went to Silent Hill right afterwards, and all those three years were just his imagination. Because if that were true, her corpse would just disappear. However, this is just a version. So what should be done to get such a depressive sequence of events? Don't heal James after any injuries, he must suffer. Always remember about his wife, and it considers not only the final dialogue, but one more moment as well. In the library of the hotel there was a chance to listen to the dialogue between James and Mary's regular doctor. The doctor says that there was no chance for her to survive, and player could hear the refusal of James to accept that fact. And now when she's gone, James is thinking about suicide more and more often. So a player had to look closely at that knife Angela wanted to kill herself with. These are three main endings, and at least now, we may have a clue why the plot of Silent Hill is considered one of the most brilliant ones. Not only actions here influence the story, not only a specific choice, but the style of playing as well. The way a player treats the character will have influences on the events in the very end, and such a thing cannot be achieved neither by movies nor even books. After finishing the game for the first time, you'll be able to get one of those endings described above. But there are more actually. You'll be able to get them only after finishing the game for the second time. In one of the endings, James would find out that there was a ritual that could revive his wife. In order to get that, a player would have to collect different ingredients and find the description of that ritual. In that case, the player would see James with the body of his wife, pulling a boat towards a small island in the middle of Toluca Lake to a small church. Okay, let's switch off from depressing thoughts, dead wives and all that stuff. And now the secret finale could be found, if a player got the endings with the revival and all three main endings. Then in the dock house, a player could find a special key that could open the closed room in the hotel. And there? Well, you should better watch yourself. Yep, everything in the city was controlled by a dog. Of course it is a joke, partly being referred to the first game, because there a player also had to find a key in one of the dog houses. A funny music was playing while showing the titles. The dog was barking and rather strange footages of the game were being shown. But at one moment, music stopped and the dog started gnawing. Such a thing would happen when the model of Eddie Dombrowski appeared on the screen. The dog didn't like him at all, obviously, and there was a reason for that because we all know that the bad guy shot a dog. The last sixth ending. In the first version of the game, this one couldn't be found and appeared only in the extended version of the game. A player had to end the scenario for James and Maria. Then in the very beginning, a player could find a blue stone. And if a player activated the stone in specific places, Aliens would come to take our protagonist away. Again, the video will be stylized as a silent movie, and the player would even be able to see Harry Mason, who was kidnapped by aliens in the first part as well. After that, the ships will go back to space again. Okay, let's depart from the subject a little and talk about gameplay. But in general, there's not much to tell, since it hasn't changed a lot from the first part. The same relatively open town, melee and ranged weapons, solving puzzles and wandering around the locations. We still have a radio that helps us to get ready for a fight with monsters and a pocket flashlight. But the graphics was in a stark contrast with the previous part. The powers of PlayStation 2 allowed to create the picture truly amazing for that time. Just look at the neighbors, it was 2001. What were the most advanced projects of that time? GTA 3 and Max Payne. 
but they were really far from Silent Hill. For example, in Max Payne, the face was only a texture stuck to the model. In Silent Hill, a player could enjoy a full facial animation, much more detailed 3D models and environment. Some people may have a different opinion, saying that the mist helped the system to save their resources, but I think this is the achievement of a great game design and atmosphere. Also, in order to cover some flaws of graphics, there was some noise effect added, which afterwards became one of the most essential elements of the games. The slight noise like in the old videotape added some charm and set the proper mood. Since I've started talking about animation, I can tell you how the animation was created. Of course, a very massive part was recorded with the help of motion capture, but the technology was not that advanced at that time and couldn't capture the mimics of real actors so well. So the character designer Satata Kayoshi manually had to create all facial animation. He spent hours in front of the mirror, repeating the phrases of characters, their movements and facial expressions, in order to track down what muscles were working at that time. Such dedication to details just proves one more time how developers put their souls in the creation of this game. Despite the fact that the events of the second game are happening in the same town of Silent Hill, you won't be able to find any familiar places. Because Harry Mason was looking for his daughter on the north part of Toluca Lake and James will be discovering mostly the south part of Silent Hill. Developers tried to make players feel lonely and abandoned. Although a player could meet some other characters, it didn't turn out a positive way. They all had something strange and unusual in their behavior, and their company couldn't be called pleasant. In order to achieve such an effect, in the beginning of the game the creators made quite a risky decision. They made a player to walk down all the way from the viewing platform to the city. It was a rather long walk and James even didn't meet any monsters along the way. Just some strange noises that could disturb players' minds, using the principle, the less you see a monster, the more we fear it. It was done in order to show that the city was not only abandoned, but also really isolated from the places where a player could find a lot of people. All in all to achieve the overwhelming feeling of loneliness. The city itself looks forgotten just like in the previous game, but still it's a little bit different. Here we can see garbage all over the place, dirt and traces of destruction. Developers wanted players to feel disgust about what they saw. You know, like when a lot of children used to play in the destroyed or unfinished buildings. There was some glass all over the place, paper, bottles, cans, walls with bad graffiti and some signs. Silent Hill 2 is all like this, even when reality is not in its dark version. Those transformations certainly existed, but the world didn't turn completely infernal. It was getting darker outside and the atmosphere inside became even gloomier and thicker, but without all that rusty nightmare and hellfire. It actually makes you feel even more uncomfortable, because the environment is almost the same like the one you can see in real life, but still there's something wrong with it. For example, all walls are covered with soft cloth, like in the asylums, so the patients won't be able to harm themselves. Or gallows in the garden, but the garden may be situated deep underground. This approach was used to create different creatures in town as well. The art director and monster designer Masahiro Ito in one of the interviews shared that he tried to design enemies so they could have resemblance with real people. But a person could understand afterwards that something was not quite right with them. Maybe their appearance, how they move or something else. And since we're finally talking about monsters, now I'll start explaining their origins. The very first enemy is a lying figure. A creature that reminds human in a hood wearing a straight jacket, which is made out of his own skin, wearing matches on its feet. Its step is a bit awkward and if it's needed it may fall and start crawling very fast, making screeching noises. There is pain and agony seen in its movements. According to Lost Memories book, this monster represents James's suffering. Masahiro Ita also said that the monster represents the inner condition of sick Mary, who thought that she looked like a deformed monster. Also, Ito shared a very interesting story about he came up with the idea about the image of this monster. There were several early sketches, and suddenly, a friend of one of the employees came into the office. He wore a hooded top, held his hands in the pockets, and was listening to music slightly dancing. This picture inspired Ito to create a monster that would look almost the same. Next we have Mannequin. This image was inspired by natural needs of James, connected with sexual dissatisfaction because of his wife's illness. That's why these women mannequins don't have any arms or heads, but have the second pair of legs. And I think there is no reason to explain what is situated between those legs. Some cockroaches migrated from the first part, but there is nothing actually to tell about them. 
The nurses had some changes. Their faces turned into a mush, bound by their own skin. As for the rest, they looked like normal women and dressed up a little bit hardcore, combining unpleasant and attractive elements, just like James who combined disturbing thoughts considering the condition of his wife and his sexual dissatisfaction. Also the skin that covers nurse's face symbolizes smothering in reference to the way Mary was killed. The last common monster is Mandarin. Yep, such a name. You could rarely see this one and it can never be found on one level with James. It also helplessly holds onto the scrapper map, trying not to fall into the abyss. And it certainly symbolizes helplessness. There are moths on his arms which again have resemblance with vulvar lips, and again leading us to sexual theme. I've already described the abstract daddy to you, but there were more besides him. For example, flesh lips. This is a human body shackled into a metal cell. It symbolizes all those horrible words that were told by Mary to James during their last days. Mary herself was also a boss. The final one, of course. And in general, it didn't differ from the lips much. She had the same metal cell that symbolizes the bed she was attached to and her dying agony. Could it be a coincidence that one of her attacks is strangling? I think you'll be able to find the analogy yourself. Also, she sends the hordes of black butterflies, which may represent the symbol of life and a symbol of death. Death for Mary and life for Maria, who by the way has a tattoo of a butterfly on her belly. And before we move to the most famous monster of Silent Hill, I would like to tell you about one more creature, which actually could not be seen. In one of the prison cells there is a prisoner who produces sounds where a player goes his way, but he is invisible. Some say it's just a bug, but I would like to think that it was done on purpose. So we finally reached this one, Pyramid Head. The first sketches of this monster were made when Masahiro Ito went to university. Of course, at that time no one could think about Silent Hill. But while developing the second part, the idea was to create a creature that looked like human, but having its true face looking like a medieval executioner. And at that time, those early sketches came in handy. Originally, this monster didn't have any pyramid, only a piece of cloth wrapped around his head. And it wasn't really different from an ordinary person. That's why creators decided to add something strange and unusual to its image. And this element became a rusty metal pyramid on his head and a huge back sword, which was carried by the monster with a horrible rasp. In the game, this monster was a personal executor of James, who had to punish him for his sins. He is the symbol of punishment that was supposed to come after the crime. The further the main character moves along the plot, the more often he'll have to go into combat with the monster. At first, Pyramid Head doesn't hurt James. He just looks after him, and after that he starts acting on his own will. No matter how hard you try, James won't be able to kill Pyramid Head. A player will have to either run from it, or just wait until the monster goes away on his own. Being a personal executioner of James, he tries to hurt James not only physically, but mentally as well. Twice this monster will kill Maria, making him overcome the loss of a close person. In the end, a player will have to fight against two Pyramid Heads, but, as I've already said, there is no point in fighting them. After some time, they will commit suicide. The thing is that the town created those monsters in order to constantly remind James about his sin, but at the moment when James accepts it completely and understands why Pyramid Head has been chasing him all this time, there is no reason for him to exist anymore. The image of Pyramid Head has spread far beyond the franchise on the internet. It's also known as a symbol of sexual harassment, because some scenes with the participation of this monster remind sexual acts. If you think that I'm being too nasty or vulgar here, then you should probably stop watching, because even developers themselves confirmed that in order to get into the heart of psychological horror, they had to reach the hearts of gamers. And there are two things that can actually touch a nerve, death and sex. No, not love, but lust. There are scenes of actual sexual harassment in this game, at least it looks like one. The images of monsters who were unpleasant and exciting at the same time. Sex parallels could be found along the whole story. This is a very mature game, but not actually dirty or disgusting. Better say, balancing on the edge. Okay, let's talk about how Silent Hill scared players. There were almost no classical boo moments and several enemies could even ignore the main character. Especially if the pocket light was turned off. You could simply run away from the most of them actually. But why was it still scary? Here fear consisted of sensible combination of the environment and sound design. And of course I can't keep silent about this one. This time Akira Yamaoka suppressed himself. Besides playing Diff Ambient, he created real compositions which could be heard even apart from the game. 
Now even the most aggressive ones didn't make a player turn off the sound like in the first Silent Hill. And most of the tracks were actually not scary, which is not typical for a horror game, it's actually on the contrary. Relaxing, a little bit sad and melancholic. The sound was very accurate. It could set a proper mood, especially the main theme that sounds in the intro video, which was created by Akira only in three days. But he was responsible not only for the music, but for the sound effects as well. All those rattling, moaning, screeching and other things were directed by him. There were about a hundred samples of footsteps recorded, so the every next step would differ from the previous one. Also in this game were used high and low resonance sounds, but this can be actually a false information since the common audio systems can play these things. I think it's time for me to end up my story, but the thing is that no matter how many things you can tell about Silent Hill, there is always more. That's why right now I'll briefly tell you about things that a player could not notice without any explanations what these things may mean. You can overinterpret it yourself. A player could find corpses with deformed faces several times through the game. But not all of you could notice that those corpses wore the same clothes as James. And developers confess, those were really 3D models of James. The most noticeable one was the body sitting in front of the television. Both armchair and television are identical to those that were found in the hotel, in the room where James was watching the videotape. Inside one bar, a player could find a writing written in blood. There was a hole here, it's gone now. But if you come here sometime later, you'll be able to find another writing. If you really want to see Mary, you should just die. But you might be heading to a different place than Mary James, given a hint about how Mary died, and that James may go to hell for that. When James found a pocket light, it was hanging on a mannequin that was dressed just like Mary, but it was probably more like a mistake than something with double meaning. The Brookhaven Hospital is spelled with a mistake. Maybe you won't be able to see it well enough, but it's written Brookhaven there. If after going into the dark version of Silent Hill, you go into Maria's room, you won't be able to find her there, but you'll hear heavy breathing instead. If you enter into one of the ladies' room, knock at the cabin and walk away, a sudden scream will be heard. It's one of those rare screamers. Of course, different unlockable things after the walkthrough were present. I've already told you about the endings, but there were weapons as well. First of all, the chainsaw that appeared in the beginning of the game while playing for the second time. Powerful, but not too easy to use. There was a hyper spray that didn't require ammo. This one could be found only after ending the game at difficult level once, twice at middle, and three times at easy level. There is one more quite a unique weapon, the Sword of Pyramid Head. The thing that could knock down almost all enemies, but the attacks and movements of James were extremely slow. We'll talk just a little bit about different versions of this game. It was released on three platforms, PlayStation 2, Xbox and PC. In the first version, there was only one scenario with James without the ending with Aliens. This ending and the part where we could play as Maria were added later in the director's cut version. This game was the subject of multiple re-editions, budget, platinum and other that barely were different from each other. And in 2012, Silent Hill was re-edited as HD Remake. It was absolutely horrible. But since the third part was also included in the remake, I'll tell you about it in the next episode, in order to describe this epic fail more completely. Oh wait, I almost forgot to tell you about the letter James got from his wife quite in the beginning of the game. Where did it come from? The thing is that this letter never existed. It was just an illusion in James's mind. The further James walked through the plot, the less text would be found there. And when he understood that he was guilty of his wife's death, the letter simply disappeared. The illusion that was built in James's mind collapsed, and he saw the real picture. You can clearly see that in the hotel. There was a fire in it, but when James came there for the first time, he didn't see anything unusual. Everything remained the same according to the memories of his vacation in Silent Hill. But when the illusion collapsed, the picture changed. The burnt walls everywhere, broken doors and the water the firemen were putting out the fire with was all over the place. But still, there was a letter. I didn't mention this element on purpose. In each of the main endings, James received it either from Mary or Maria, a full and real letter. It was Mary's confession before her death. She apologizes for being rude with James, wrote how happy she was with him, and that he should live his own life and be happy. I cannot describe you with simple words what feelings 
this letter caused. It was read by the actress who gave Mary her voice, and closer to the end of this letter, she was really crying, and players were crying along. James, you made me happy. It is such a touching monologue that I would add it here completely, but this episode is really long even without it. You better find it somewhere on YouTube. And even better, play this game yourself. Although I've told you a lot of things, it's just tip of the iceberg. A lot of things should be interpreted by yourself. We can disagree with many other things, but that's why it's worth getting familiar with the story of James. Yes, you already know the plot, but you can't really describe this game. You have to live through it. There is a huge love of developers seen to the creation. Everything starting with the plot and finishing animation was made with extraordinary attention to details. Every single thing in this game had meaning and gave reason for thinking much deeper. As a result, the masterpiece was created. The masterpiece for the ages. Time doesn't spare a lot of games, but Silent Hill doesn't get old. Because it's not a story about the end of the world. Not a story about war with zombies, not a story about enemies invasion. It's an ordinary story, about ordinary people, given through metaphors, images and hints. This is a story about horrible, but unfortunately common things, about murder, abuse and violence, but still about hope, love and forgiveness. Love and take care of each other, so the guilt would never lead you to Silent Hill.